Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Randerson Cardozo. I'm a practicing cardiologist in Boston, Massachusetts. And in today's video, I'm going to share some valuable insights of what I've learned in my journey of publications. We're going to discuss everything from the right method, developing collaborations, how to impress mentors, and everything you need to know to also be successful in this journey. But before we dive in, make sure to like the video and also subscribe to the channel to stay tuned in to future videos like this one. All right, as a medical student or as a resident, doing research is a major challenge. You're very busy with clinical work or there's one exam after the other, but you still have to do research. So the first step is really to have this understanding that building a strong CV with impactful publications is really a critical component to advance your career. This is non-negotiable. You have to find a way to do it. That's exactly the situation that I faced as a first year resident at the University of Miami. I had just moved from my home country of Brazil. I didn't know the people yet. I was working 80 hours per week. I had no prior research experience. But one thing I knew, if I wanted to advance my career into a competitive cardiology fellowship, I needed to get publications done. And so how did I do it? And more importantly, how can you do it? The first thing you have to understand is the right method. Don't fall into the trap of thinking that you need dedicated research time or to join a lab or to do a research fellowship to getting research and publications done. You can get started right away as long as you have the right method. You can actually do high quality, impactful research with autonomy and then reach out to mentors when you have that project well advanced, when you have a draft of the manuscript or when you have statistics, when you've already done some work to prove yourself. And this is all possible if you learn a specific method of research, which is the meta-analysis. And there are other ways to do it, but you can't do this with all types of research. For example, you can't do a clinical trial independently. A meta-analysis is probably the highest impact type of research that you can do with this level of autonomy that I've described. And this is exactly what I learned early on in my career. When you learn meta-analysis, you can develop your own idea. You can search the literature. You can run the statistics yourself. You can write the draft of the manuscript. So you can do all the different steps that will ultimately lead to a published manuscript. You can be independent, achieve impactful results, present in great conferences, publish in high impact journals. And these are the things, these are the results that will ultimately advance your career through research. Research is often a collaborative effort. This is key to understand. Don't hesitate to invite your colleagues and your friends to participate and collaborate in your work. Even if you take the lead in a project, you should use your own projects to build the network around you of collaborations that will allow you to be successful in your publications, in your career. Build a network of like-minded individuals around you using your own projects as a way to get there. This collaborative approach is not really about sharing the workload. As a first author, you will do the bulk of the work. It's about giving others opportunities so that they can invite you and that you can be part of a group that publishes a lot because now you benefit not only from your first author publications, but also from being co-author in the work of others. So when you stumble upon an idea, invite your friends to participate in your project. Invite professors, invite mentors or potential mentors to collaborate with you. If you're working on a meta-analysis, teach them the right methods. Work together to figure out things. Collaboration will also bring varied experiences to the table. Maybe you can have someone who is great at reviewing the written part of it and can help you improve your writing. Maybe you can bring on someone that knows statistics. So try to build these collaborations around you and also keep that focus in mind that they will also reach out to you on their own projects. Remember, collaboration is critical. Collaboration over competition. 
Here's my own example. From 2014 to 2016, I published 17 manuscripts. But out of those 17, nine were as first author and eight were as co-authors. The way I was able to get eight papers as co-author was because I collaborated on projects with my colleagues. And the reason why I did that was because I had invited them to be collaborators on my own projects. And get this, some of these collaborations I maintain to this day, 10 years later. They're good friends. From time to time we publish together. These collaborations will go through you in your entire career sometimes. When reaching out to mentors, it's important to bring them, to present them concrete results rather than just some raw idea or even worse, just asking for an opportunity. That's not what you want to do. You have to bring results to the table. These results could be in the form of a preliminary analysis. It could be in the form of a well-structured research plan on a specific project, or better yet, it could be in the form of a draft, an early draft of a manuscript. By doing so, you show commitment to that project and you show, you demonstrate that you're able to achieve results. Showcasing your dedication in the form of tangible, palpable outcomes of your work is much more important and creates a more lasting impression than just asking for an opportunity to someone. The bottom line is that mentors or potential mentors care about three things. Hard work, your personality, and your results. Essentially, they want to know whether you will be worth their time to train you, to educate you, and they want to know that you will be able to generate results, and they want to know if it will be pleasant working with you, if you won't give them a hard time. When you approach them with concrete results, you already take two of these elements out of the equation. You already show commitment and you already demonstrate your ability to generate results. If you're just a good person, if you have good communication skills, this will be added value, but you've already demonstrated the key elements that they're looking for in a mentee. This essentially shows them that their energy towards you and training you will be rewarded. You may also get invited for observerships, for clerkships, for research fellowships, he or she may write you a letter of recommendation and your partnership and collaboration will only grow from there. You know, we started off this video by talking about the sheer number of publications that I had in three years. And while quantity is important, quality is also a critical component of your research work. In fact, it is preferable to have a smaller number of high impact publications than a larger number of irrelevant studies. Let's delve into why and how the scientific community places a premium on well-conducted research studies and impactful publications. In the eyes of the scientific community, well-executed research stands out as a testament to your expertise, your dedication, and contribution to the field. Be very careful not to spend your time doing low-impact, irrelevant publications like tons of case reports. Producing a large amount, a large number of publications may seem like a great feat, especially if you're junior in your career. However, the scientific community, program directors when you apply for a position, whoever it is that's looking at your CV is going to be very quick to make out that these are low quality publications and distinct them from really substantial contributions that may be done by other applicants, for example. Again, if you apply for a difficult position, residency, fellowship, whatever it may be, those case reports are just not going to get you anywhere. However, this is another advantage of the meta-analysis. Doing a meta-analysis gives you a unique opportunity not only to get numbers, but also to get impact in your publications. 
This paper here, for example, this manuscript is by one of our students in the Meta-Analysis Academy, and she published as a first author in a top-ranking journal in the field of neurosurgery. This is the type of publications that you should be aiming for. A meta-analysis is at the top of the pyramid of evidence. So this gives you authority, impact. You know, some of our students have even won awards at global conferences, published in major journals, because the meta-analysis gives you impact. Of course, all of this only applies if the meta-analysis is also of a good idea, and if it's done with the right methods, if it's well conducted. You know, this is a separate topic, but meta-analysis themselves can also have low quality. So you really have to do a nice job, a good job on the meta-analysis itself to reach this impact that I've mentioned. Remember, academic reputation is a valuable currency. A barrage of low quality papers full of weak methods, error, biases, or just of irrelevant topics this will cause a very poor impression of your CV. Each publication should be a testament to your commitment to advanced knowledge in your field of interest. And not just a checkbox that you have to fill to get a good CV. In the marathon of academic careers, having good quality publications is really what advances your career forward. Time management is a key component of this process. As I was saying earlier, how can you work 80 hours a week and still get publications done? It's very possible, I did it myself, but you really need to know the right methods, apply all the right tools that I've told you so far, but you also need to manage time effectively. You can't get lost on 20 different things at the same time and not have focus in the specific ones that really matter to you. For each of your high priority projects, what you should do is establish timelines, determine the specific goals. If you're first author, who's going to do what and when and in which time frame. Identify priorities within that project, delegate tasks when you can, and ultimately take that project all the way to the finish line before you commit yourself to another important project. And the other critical component of this whole thing is just to maintain consistency. Do one after the other. This is a marathon, it's not a sprint. Getting one impactful paper is great, but this has to be followed by another one and another one. You have to keep doing this over and over, over a few years, five years, a decade of your career, this will translate into a competitive residency, a great fellowship, opportunities in your career, in the, your field of interest, and ultimately, this is how you become a leader in academic medicine. To sum it up, whether you're a medical student, a resident, or you're just busy with clinical work, these strategies can help you improve research productivity in your journey, in your career. Remember, you can achieve the best of both worlds, a high number of publications and quality in your publications. This will be a gold mine to advance your career. Thank you for joining me today. If you are interested in joining our program, the Meta-Analysis Academy, I want to invite you to join the waitlist below. The link is in the description of this video. I want to invite you to become a part of the Meta-Analysis Academy community and delve into this research world of doing meta-analysis, high impact publications with autonomy. Also, if you thought this video was helpful to you, make sure to hit the like button and leave your thoughts on the comment section below. Until next time.